Good afternoon, Braves fans, and welcome to this week's edition of the Black and Gold Report, a program all about UNCP athletics. I'm Kevin Freeman, and today on the show, we'll be joined by head football coach Pete Chinnick, and for the second half of the program, we'll be having a talk with athletics director Dan Kenny. But first, as always, joined by Coach Chinnick. Coach, welcome back to the program. Thank you. A very disappointing loss this week, a 34-7 loss against a very good Winston-Salem State team, uh, arguably the team's worst performance on a day where, based on how, well the, how good the Rams are and how well the Rams executed on this day, it was going to take a quality performance to get the win. Uh, comment a little bit on the Braves' performance this week. Well, I think, like you said, I mean, they are a very good opponent, uh, and they played, I'm pretty sure, you know, error-free football. After looking at the film and going through it, uh, they made very few mistakes. And the mistakes that they did make, we did not capitalize on. And then we just did not uh, do a good enough job, really, in any area of the, uh, of the game uh, to change the momentum or to take it out of their hands. So uh, disappointed for our guys that uh, they picked uh, that day to play as poorly as we did. I know they're, uh, they're a couple of years away from a double, being 1AA, which they were in the past. Is, are, are they still 1AA uh, in a lot of characteristics, do you think? Well, they are. I mean, they, they were pretty much 80% of that roster was recruited to play FCS football. Mm -hmm. uh, and what took place when they dropped down to Division II is uh, they really cut the guys who were juniors and seniors um, from that roster and, and kept the freshmen and the sophomores that had been recruited to FCS. So you can see a lot of the guys on that team, their size, their speed, uh, were really recruited when they were, you know, an FCS football mm -hmm. team. So they, they, they've got a lot of that quality still left in them. Well, you clearly weren't terribly happy with the team's performance in your post-game uh, uh, news conference. Uh, what were the Braves not doing this week that, you, that you've started to become accustomed to in, in recent weeks? Well, I think, you know, two things. Uh, on offense, I don't think we executed, obviously, as well as we're capable of. We only ran 50 plays. Um, we averaged, you know, five and a half yards a play. I think we had 263 yards of offense, somewhere around there. Uh, we've been averaging about 75, 80 plays a game, so we limited ourselves. Um, I think we pressed a little bit late in the game when the score was, you know, still close. Uh, I think some players thought they needed to do some things uh, that I, d I didn't think they needed to. Just, you know, they should have stuck with the game plan a little more, and uh, we need to grind out a few more first downs to keep the ball out of their hands and then obviously get us closer to uh, scoring. And then defensively, uh, you know, we did not tackle as well as we would had the last three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, we had uh, their players within our sights, and we were right there, and uh, they'd break a tackle and get an extra 10, 15 yards. A lot of arm tackling it seemed to be mm -hmm. what's going on this week. Uh, well, a statistic in, in, in my amateur opinion which tells it all this week is the time of possession. The Rams had it for 42 minutes in this game and the Braves had it for 18 minutes. We've talked about time of possession a number of times in here before, but what kind of effect does that have uh, on your team, particularly on defense? And I know they also had an 18-play drive which took a lot of the wind out of your defensive sails as well. Talk about the dominance. Well, what time. it does is, uh, you know, after uh, the first half, I think the uh, time frame was, uh, uh, I, I think we had the ball eight minutes. So it was 22 to eight uh, in the first half. And I think you could start to see a little fatigue take place in our defense. That, that's a long time to play uh, out there. And I think you could start seeing our, our offense get anxious because they weren't sure how many opportunities they were going to have. Pretty sure we had the ball the same number mm -hmm. of times that they did. Uh, they just did a whole lot more with it. Uh, than uh, you know we did offensively so it starts to grind on you and it starts to you know become a factor where uh, guys think they've got to do more uh, than really they do mm -hmm. uh, and again we, we had some uncharacteristic plays uh, we had some situations where I didn't feel like guys were you know doing what they'd done the last three weeks and when that happens uh, a team the caliber of Winston-Salem State is going to take advantage of them. Talk about that two-minute drive that the Rams had to end the first half. Uh, it only put them up 20-7, to seven, but uh, was this something that really contributed to, to the fatigue? I mean, was, it, was this something that uh, really had a negative mental effect on the team than being able to drive in the last two minutes and score a touchdown before halftime? Well, a lot of factors played into that. First off, offense, we missed a couple of, you know, we, we had a four and out, I believe. We got a first down, and we missed a couple opportunities to keep that drive going mm -hmm. uh, where the offense had the ball. Then we had the ball, I think we punted around the the 20-yard line, uh, and Bill Stanley did not get off a great punt. We gave him the ball right around the 48. Uh, in the same time frame, we had a personal foul uh, in that yeah. drive defensively that you know contributed to them getting a first down and putting them uh, within position at the six. Uh, and then once they scored, I think that just kind of created a bad scenario throughout the course of you know how to end the half. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, we got about 30 seconds left for the, for the first break. Uh, the, the Rams were 5 of 6 on fourth down and uh, 14 and 24 on third and fourth downs to combined. Why, why were they so successful on fourth down? 
Well, I think number one, they kept doing it. Uh, you know, they kept they kept trying it, but they were in fourth and one, fourth and two, fourth and a half a yard. Uh, you know, I think they did one fourth and six uh, where they caught us uh, and got a quarterback draw. Um, you know, they, they had confidence that they could get it. They were playing with a lot of excitement, and uh, we were kind of flat and giving up some plays. And I always kind of joke, if you can't make fourth and inches, then you don't deserve to be on the field half the time. All right, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to talk to Coach Shinnick about Senior Day and the upcoming game against West Liberty. Founded in 1887 as the Croatan Normal School, the University of North Carolina at Pembroke has grown to a student body of over 6,000 and is now one of the most diverse institutions in the nation. As we prepare to celebrate our 125th anniversary in 2012, we remember the rich heritage of this institution and anticipate an exciting future. With an average class size of 21 students, the University of North Carolina at Pembroke is a place where students will get the personal attention they deserve at a great value. If you want to know your professors and classmates and have an enriching experience inside and outside of the classroom, then UNC Pembroke might be exactly what you're looking for. If you have what it takes to be brave, check out experience.uncp.edu. There, you can take an online campus tour, schedule a campus visit, or apply for admission. Going to UNCP isn't for everyone. It's for the brave. 